You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of the Echo Flynn's Path. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> By the way, how's your project going? Being reminded that I have an entire project to do doesn't ease the knot that's formed in my stomach. Uh, not that great. Still need a lot of film and research. What kind of research? Stuff about Echo. Like, history stuff? Yep. Carl plays a while longer, then sets down his controller. My mom might have some Echo history stuff in the cellar, but... He pauses. You know, Flynn is like, the records holder, right? The clerk, yeah. I already know what Carl is getting at, and honestly, I want to kick myself for not thinking of it in the first place. Carl turns to me, a loopy grin on his face. Those edibles really do fuck with him. So, let's go get some records from him. Probably better than digging around in my basement. Well, yeah, we should, but I don't even know what, what to get. Don't worry about it, dude. I go down there to shoot the shit with him all the time. We can ask him. Things aren't exactly cool between Flynn and I right now, but it's something to do. I'm so behind on my project at this point, I don't have any excuses. We pull into the we pull into the gravel parking lot in front of City Hall. The stucco structure looks a hell of a lot more weathered than I remember it. Tarp drapes the tarp drape the roof, and one of the windows is blocked is blacked out with with plastic. City Hall is probably the oldest building still standing in Echo. From what I read on the county's website, it, ser it served as the town's post office back in the early 20th century. Before then, it was an outpost used as an intelligence operations center during the years leading up to the Mormon Rebellion. Government spies were planted in the nearby settlements from Colville to Peyton and delivered their reports on potential agitators at this outpost. They actually kept a priest on hand to help reaffirm the spy's faith in the true word of Christ. It's weird to think that Sydney was the last Mormon I knew. Are you sure Flynn works here? I exit my car, watching Carl stare ahead. His eyes are half-lidded, the ram seeming to stare for miles beyond the building in front of us. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Alright. Carl doesn't move. Are you gonna come out? The ram blinks slowly, his mouth starting to hang agape. He shifts... He shifts his bloodshot gaze. He shifts his bloodshot gaze toward my torso. Ah, my parents would flip. He flops his wrist in front of him limply. His tone tinged with the with the with the feminacy of the car. Yeah, just uh, give me a sec. Car reaches down, unscrewing the lid from his water bottle and taking a few hearty glugs. When Carl grabs the car's door handle, he hesitates. After a moment, he looks at me. He's completely silent, sucking in his cheek in one side. Carl. Finally, he speaks. I sort of agreed to come without considering that I'd be talking to anyone but you and a crew today. Let alone the mayor and stuff. I'm still stoned as balls and look like shit. He laughs, he laughs in some, he laughs some in a self-deprecating fashion. Visibly sheepish despite the THC, THC still flowing through him. I think I might just chill here in your car with the air conditioning and high, and high gun tactics. He holds up his phone and I think I could just barely spot the icon for it in his sea of other game apps. Kyle does look high, though he doesn't appear any worse than he usually looks. Telling him that probably wouldn't do for do much for his confidence, though. Pretty sure. Carl, man, you're acting pretty sober sobered right now, and you don't smell like weed too fiercely, at least to my otter senses. Really, your otter senses must be pretty dull. Your bo is overpowering it. Carl hastily sniffs himself, then tries to air out his hoodie from the bottom by flapping it up and down. I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> you're fine. I have some sunglasses in the glove box to cover your eyes. Carl sighs, tugging open the dash. A few crumpled receipts, my registration slip, an insurance brochure, and a pair of slightly dusty sunglasses are visible in the compartment. Oh, uh, they're tortoise shell! Isn't that kind of girly? What? Guys can't- guys can wear tortoise shell style ones. It's not like- it's not like polka dot or something. Mom wears these colored sunglasses all the time. I literally can't see these without picturing her. Well, like, that's your personal thing. No one else thinks that. He slides them onto his face. They rest- they rest somewhat awkwardly on his sizable snout, unable to settle in a place nearby, in place neatly. Damn, your nose is too big! It's like, y'all, it is shake time. Oh, hold up. Yep, it is time for a shake. Hmm. Oh, man, that's delicious. Carl pulled the shades off his face and limply tosses them in the dash, leaning back into his seat with a long exhale. Dude, I think I should just stay in the car. Seriously. I need your help with some of this stuff, Carl. I'd feel all awkward if I was in there for hours with you just sitting in here waiting for me. It's fine. I just get in your way. I'm not really good at this sort of st research stuff. 
There's a difference between exploring old records for interesting info and frantically searching for stuff alone the night before a, pa before a paper's due, Carl. He doesn't budge. Graham staring at his phone in his lap. What's the matter with you? You look fine. Can you just uh, stop putting a spotlight on me, dude? What? He idly taps on his phone, though he's just blankly flipping through screens at the moment. Carl! Graham pushes open the door and steps out, looking away from me. Ugh, alright, thank you. He's acting absolutely bizarre. Part of me hopes this is just a weird side effect of the edibles from this morning. We'll talk later, okay? Carl sniffs, shrugging his shoulders. He's trying to act nonchalant. Sure, dude. What do you want me to do? I do my best attempt at, reassur at a reassuring smile, for Carl's sake. I don't really feel too cheery at the moment, though. Well, first, we should get the tripod and camera out of the trunk. We can get some B-roll of the building while we're here. The camera is kept separate, in a padded hard case. Uh, see if you can get the tripod set up with the camera on it. I'm gonna head inside, say hello, and get permission to film real quick. I pop the trunk with the, bu with the button on my keys. Carl looks, looks toward the equipment with a thin-lipped expression. Uh, okay. There's a bubble level on the tripod. Just make sure that the bubble is in the center is in the center uh, center circle when you set it up. That means it's level. That way our shot won't be all crooked. Once it's good, you just let the just slide the camera so that it's hooked into the place from the back of the stand. Make sure that it clicks. That means it's locked. Uh huh. Carl digs his paws into the insides of his hoodie, still staring into the trunk. Okay, I'll be right back. Leaving Carl, I head toward the front door. I'm still not sure what's up with him, but pre but pressing him right. Pressing him on it now doesn't seem like a good idea. Stepping into City Hall, the first thing I notice is how dry the air feels, like there's no ventilation to speak of. It makes me feel like I'm standing inside a really slow-baking oven. Half of me wants to run out and jump into the first body of water I can find, while the other half just wants to curl up into a ball and nap. The faint droning of a voice on a speaker is audible. It sounds like some sort of outdoorsy hunting, hunting and fishing podcast. Chase? Flynn's tail, leering from... Flint, blah. Flynn's tall, leering form emerges from one of the doorways, a stack of envelopes in his hand. We stare at each other for a few seconds, as the reality of what we've done with one another is hanging pretty poignantly in the air. Um, hey! He exhales, his demeanor shifting, his raised shoulders going more lax and his tail settles on the musty, carpeted floor. What? He looks back through one of the doorways beside him, and back to me. His scale brow is furrowed. For a moment, my mind blanks, and I'm not sure what to do with my paws. It's really stuffy in here. Flynn looks at me questioningly. The only people who work here are reptiles, so we keep the habitats all dry and such. His gaze shifts back to the doorway again before returning to me. There's something you want? I'm pretty busy. I clear my throat, crossing my arms over my chest. Yeah, I was hoping to get permission to film around City Hall and take a look at some records. What records were you looking to go through? Well, uh, I don't know. Flynn stares at me with an, indis with an indiscernible expression. I'm just looking for anything I can use in my report. So you don't have a parcel number or a date or anything. So just want to you so you just want to what? Browse? Well, maybe you could point me in the right direction. You're the city clerk after all. Flynn lets out a raspy exhale, moving to take a seat in his swivel chair at the front of the, de at the front desk. He's still coiling around the base. All right, y'all. One second. Let me uh, drink some more of my delicious shake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So good. All right, the reading room is off limits on account that on account the monsoon season took out a portion of its roof cover last year. I can set you up in the mail room with a microfiche and a computer for the time being. He grasps the edge of his desk, staring at the tips of his fingers. I need to check with the mayor to see what all you've got access to. One's about to stand up again when another gila steps into the room. Oh, she's slightly overweight and check and decked out in khaki shorts and a matching out with a outdoor matching outdoorsy button up top. Despite being indoors, she dons a large sun hat, also khaki, with a vibrant floral bandana around her neck. It's supposed to be the mayor, Flynn's on. I thought I heard another voice in here. I catch wind of her perfume, a strong sweet pea scent that seems to fill the room. Her slitted blue-green eyes focus in on me. It's almost like she's sizing me up. Are you from the Grant Committee? I pause, quickly shake my head. No, sorry. She visibly seems to deflate, her brow lowering and her eyelids drooping to a half-lidded lull. Ah! I'm Chase, Flynn's friend. That's so, another one then. She looks over toward Flynn, who's currently rubbing his temple. He responds quickly. An old friend, childhood. You've met Chase before, I'm pretty sure, at least seen him around town. She seems to think for a moment before a look of realization comes to her. Oh, I almost didn't recognize you with that thing on your chin. I most certainly remember you. 
I blink, reaching up and covering my goatee instinctively. You were the one who was always palling around with the red wolf fella, Leo, weren't you? Gay couple, right? I chuckle a bit sheepishly, nodding. Having spent the three years at Pueblo, I'm not as used to people talking about me like this as I, w as I once was. Yeah, sort of. I mean, yes. She exchanges a glance with Flynn, who is looking a bit tense. Uh, Chase is doing a school project on the town, and wants access to records we've got on hand. He fill out a request form yet? No, he just wants to, uh, browse, I guess. Well, it's only public record stuff that I want to take a look at. You still have to go through the process. Usually the requests are just for, just for a parcel at a time. What sort of school project is this for, Chase? Well, I'm a journalism major at the University of Pueblo. I have to create a documentary-style video report on something. I chose Echo. Ah, you aren't aiming to smear us to the general public then, are you? Her tone suggests she's joking, but she has that some same intense look that Flynn has where I can't really tell for sure. <laughs> no, Mayor. You know, we have a grant application that we're interested in putting in, putting in there that requires a video entry detailing the sites around town. Would you be interested in that sort of thing? Oh, well, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd have to know more about the project. Honestly, I can't imagine the sheer amount of sugarcoating I need to muster to create a positive report about this about this place. Fill this. Fill this out. Flynn is pushing a form across the desk my way. The mayor clears her throat. Chase, where it asks for lot parcel requests, can you just put all inventory? All right, will do. As I take a pen from Flynn and begin to write, I see him look up to his aunt. All inventory? Yes. All right, then. He huffs some idly. The, pod the podcasters on Flynn's computer speakers are going into detail about creating complex fishnets and trappings. I'll leave you two boys to it, then. Welcome back to Echo, Chase. It's good to be back. Flynn simply rolls his eyes, turning back to his computer. The mayor just smiles before heading back to what I assume is her office. I finish up the form in silence, pushing it back toward Flynn. He squints at it for a moment before speaking. Any word from Leo? It's, the topic changes. The topic change catches me off guard. I look up to see Flynn leaning in close, his voice lowered. Yeah, he believed the whole spending the night. He believed the whole spending the night at Carl's story. Carl went along with it. Uh huh. I ended up telling him the whole truth though. I guess I just started feeling real shit about all this lying. So, you know, let me pause it right here and uh, drink some more of my shake. Oh, man. That's so damn good. Ben leans back in his chair suddenly, clenching his eyes shut. He opens his mouth like he's going to say something, but merely shakes his head. Chase, you fucking realize that when this week is over, you just get to go back to college land. And I'm stuck here with the results of all your shitty choices. You know Carl as well as I do, he wouldn't go telling Leo to start to start drama. And anyway, he saw us, you know, by your truck. Flynn's eyes open and he just stares at the ceiling for a long moment. Fuck it. Let's get your musky ass set up with a goddamn county guest log and and so guest login so you can access your GIS maps. He scoots back over toward his computer, beginning to type something in. I catch a glimpse of his desktop wallpaper. It's like some sort of waterfall surrounded by a lush evergreen forest. It's kind of blurry, like a smaller image stretched to the fit the screen size. I also see a few transparent stock image logos overlaid on top. We've got plenty of we've got physical records, the real old ones, stored in the mailroom. Though I wouldn't say the shit there is very browsable. Some religious historical society types came by eight months ago and helped us archive a lot of it. They're all in the labeled middle of folders along the south wall. Flynn turns back to the computer, pecking at the keyboard. For a clerk, he's not remotely a fast typer. Oh, damn, I forgot to ask for permission to film here. Flynn grunts. Permission granted. Go do that while I get this fucking thing working. Glancing back at his screen, I see incorrect password. Two remaining entries before lockout flash out. After looking at his keyboard, it takes me only a couple seconds to figure out what's wrong. Um, Flynn? What? He snaps at me, and I can see his pointed teeth between his scalp lips, his scaled lips for a, for a moment. Uh, you have caps lock on. Flynn pounds the caps lock key with some extra force before returning back to his typing. Thanks, now fuck off for a bit. I stare at him and I can't help but feel a twisting sensation in my chest. I'm not sure if I expected him to treat me differently after doing what he did, but I definitely didn't think he'd treat me worse. I try to think up something to say to make this right. To make this not awkward as it seems as not awkward as it seems to be getting. But the longer I sit here, the more uncomfortable he seems to get. I guess I'm just literally leering at him like a creep right now. Fuck. I get up and head out. Deciding keeping my mouth shut is the best course of action for the time being. As I step outside, the first thing I see is Carl down on his knees on the gravel, the tripod up right beside him. His large shoulders are shaking some, and I can hear Rast swears in between his shuffling movements. Carl? 
Carl's shuffling stops. Graham turns his head to look at me, with the whites of his eyes looking like the color of bubblegum. Guess he wasn't sobering up as much as I thought as I thought he was. Fuck, dude! I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, fuck! I just slipped into shit because the thing is too hard to put on. Like, it won't lock? There was no click! As I approach, I see my camera splayed out in front of him in the gravel on his side. Carl's clutching a snapped-off battery in his paw. Oh, Jesus, Carl, you dropped it? It wouldn't, it wouldn't turn on, this thing fell off! He holds up the battery casing and I quickly take it from him, beginning to try to fasten it back on. I'm real fucking sorry, man. I'll pay for it and everything, and, and like, I could write a note to your teacher saying it's my fault that... Snap. The battery locks him into place on the back of the camera. With a tentative sigh, I flip on the power. The digital display flashes to life through the viewfinder, and I look back up at Carl. His jaw is slack, his expression vacant, almost gormless. It's fine. Looks like nothing's broken or cracked. He rubs a sizable paw across his eyes and muzzle, closing his mouth. The flickering wave of relief that appears in his eyes seems to quickly dissipate, however. Huh, I guess it wasn't broken. No, the battery's disconnected from the camera when it slid off the tripod. They're designed to come off. Like, I do it all the time to recharge them. He just kneels there, rubbing his face as he stares at the equipment. Carl, this isn't that hard. He's quiet for a second. Yeah, I know it isn't. He pushes himself back up to his hooves. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!